Well, hello, Mojos. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to do a little something, something. We're going to have a tech video this time. Yeah, we're going to show you how to go ahead and do the whole neck. You see, we showed you last time how to adjust the truss rod here. You know, how it took the, the scariness out of adjusting the truss rod. But now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the neck off of this body. And we're going to go over it and we're going to show you all the little things that we do to make this just the smoothest, easiest playing, lowest action guitar that you can, that you can get. Because you know, if this neck ain't playing right, the guitar's not playing right. I mean, pretty much everything lies in the neck. And we're going to show you how to get your neck perfect. Let's take it over the bench. Alrighty folks, here we are over the bench. You know, I was just taking a look at this little PV Rockstar, you know, not a really expensive guitar, but this is the perfect kind of guitar to get mojo-fied. You see, it's just a plain old simple one pickup. No trim, no trim on there. No, it's just a string through. And man, she got some scratches and looking dirty. You know, it's seen better days. But well, we're gonna go through this and we're gonna make this a real nice one because, well, first of all, it's just a single pickup. You know, nice and easy peasy. There's no trim to, to fool around with. You know, it's got a nice little fretboard on it. We can go over it, we can do some real nice things. Maybe put some locking tuners in it. Something like that. Maybe do some real special things to it. But, uh, yeah, this is a good candidate. And, boy, you're going to be surprised how this one turns out. We're going to do a few videos on this one, doing the little different things that, you, that we do to them to get them all mojo-fied. And, you know, this one's going to end up being real special. So, but, without further ado, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the neck off of the body. And the first thing you want to do is you want to flip around over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, you know, when you when you put a screwdriver to the to the guitar, you always want to make sure that you kind of hold it with two hands if you can, and get it in there. And just for the neck, we're just going to give it a little turn, just to kind of loosen up the screws a little bit, nice and even. So we'll just take a little bit of the tension off each one of them. Man, there's some junk in that one. I got to get in there and dig some junk out of that right there. That's not right. Where's my junk digger out here? I'll have to find something. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, we'll try this little screw here or something. Yeah, there's definitely something in that screw hole that they don't like. Let's see if we can't get that one. Okay, let me get that one there. Oh my lord. I'll tell you what, I'll be right back when I find something that I can dig out the junk out of this screw. Well, all right, it gave up, a, it put up a fight, but uh, there was some kind of rubbery junk in there, so I had to get my X-Acto knife out and dig it out. But we got it all out of there now. We're going to take this screw out. Okay. Now, seeing that I don't want to put weight on it this way down, I'm going to pick this up, and we're going to go ahead and just kind of take the screws off it without having any weight, because I don't want to pull any of the screws or anything like that, it's too, but you know, you know. Yeah, this one's pretty well scratched up on the back, as you can see, you know. So you got to be careful with the screwdriver and stuff, but on this one, I don't think it really matters. I don't think I could scratch it up anymore, it already was scratched up. But well, we're going to do some nice stuff to this. I'm looking at this back plate right here going, you know, I could probably etch something in there. I could probably etch Mojo Shop Guitar in there with some, you know, a little bit of stencil and some acid. We'll go in there and etch that plate right there. It'll look real nice. Make it special. They sure got some nice beefy screws in here. They weren't fooling around with that. 
making a nice, good, strong connection. Now, on one of these days, I should show you guys how to turn a bolt-on neck into a set neck. How to do that. We'll do that. Maybe we'll do that on this one. Who knows? All right. Get all the screws out of there. The plate off there. That's, see, that's nice. It's got a little black plastic backing on it like that. I like that. I like that. And she comes right across, comes right apart real nice and easy peasy. And uh, there's the end of the, right there. Got your little guide pin hole there. And yes, you can see there's some dirt and junk. Oh, that was sawdust just fell out of there. You know, there's nothing on the end like that. So, you know, but it did fit in the pocket real nice. Did fit in the pocket real nice. It's a nice tight fit there. So that's nice. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll get this body out of the way here. Put that right over here. It's nice and safe. Okay, and we don't need this pad anymore. So, one of the first things we did before is we, in the other videos, we got this neck nice and level. And one of the things we wanna do now is we wanna check, make sure it is still nice and level. So, we're gonna get our nice little, tiny little feeler gauge here, right here, and our nice little uh, straight edge. We're just gonna stick that right across there. And we're just gonna kinda come across the front here. And we're gonna see if this sucker's still flat like I like it. And it looks to me like it has developed a little bit of a gap down the middle just a little bit. I think we need to tighten up this truss rod just a hair. So we'll stick our wrench in there and we'll give it just a hair of a tighten. Okay, we're going to put it in there. We're going to give it just a hair of a tighten. There we go. Now, you know we didn't have to come up much. So, we'll give it a little bend in the direction we want it to go. See, we're giving it a little bend. That kind of helps a little bit. Stick that back on there. And we'll see if we can any gap. Goes under that one just a little bit. Right there. I think that we can go just to one little bit more schmitzer. Let's see. Oh yeah, I took that gap right up. Yep, that's good. Okay, we got a good, nice level fretboard. Now, the, the fretboard is perfectly level because we measured it and everything like that. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to clean this fretboard before we go ahead and do anything else to it because we don't want to grind in a bunch of dirt and stuff like that so we're going to take just a little bit of tissue here and a little bit of rubbing alcohol and we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of that on there and then we're just going to go ahead and wipe down this whole fretboard here We're going to get all the old schmutz and stuff so you can see how dirty that rag is already. Just when we haven't even made it over yet. You know, it's getting all the grease and grime and stuff off there. See how dirty that is? Yeah, it needs to be, you know. We need to get all that off there before we go grinding it in. You know, there's a lot of hand sweat and skin and, you know, yuck, yucky junk on here. We want to get it all nice and clean. And I'm paying special attention to get up close to the frets there, because that seems to be where all the junk collects is like right in here, you know. In fact, we could probably zoom in a little bit on this clip mirror, huh? Yeah, there we go. We'll zoom in a little bit nicer. So we'll get in here, we'll get all this stuff right quick here. We'll let go wide out just a little bit. There we go. And we'll get on there and get all that stuff. And you kind of want to keep going on this until, you know, you're whatever rag you're using or toilet paper or whatever you know it comes out clean that way you know you got all the stuff off there but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give it some more cleaning afterwards so we don't have to get a spotless this time and I'll even kind of go down the neck a little bit here side here down the sides get a little bit across the back there okay right, we'll put that back that 
there. Okay, now we got to clean it up a little bit here. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we are going to level out the frets. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to get our big old fat marker. We got a big fat black marker. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in a little bit here. There we go. And what we're basically going to do, we're going to take the side of this marker here, and we're going to put a little black line right across the top of that, that fret there. Okay. And we're going to do that to all these frets all the way up and down the fretboard. Just like that there. Sounds like I got a little bit of a thunderstorm brewing outside. It's awful dark and humid today here in the beautiful state of Michigan. You know, they say wait five minutes and the, and the weather will change in Michigan. And sometimes that is very, very true. But you know what? It's a beautiful state to live in. So we're going to head finish off getting some black marker across the top of these. Yep. Mm, love the smell of magic marker. Oh. Anyway, we'll get the tops of these all. Put some marker across it. Now, the reason we're doing this is because when we take our sanding block, you know, our, our leveling beam here that we're going to use to our, you know, leveling beam, which is drag right out. Hey, we'll wait a little bit. We're going to take our leveling beam here, which just has, just has a little bit of real light 600 grit sandpaper on the bottom of it. Hardly does anything. And what we're going to do, and this is perfectly flat across here, what we're going to do is we are going to take this and we're going to go across the top of these frets here and when we take off all when I can look at it and I see that there's no more um, black marker on the tops of the frets that way I know that everything is level and everything has been flattened right out so we'll just take this and set it on there and we're just going to go back and forth and you're going to notice that it's going to feel a little bit bumpy at first until it starts getting things smoothed out and you can, you know, apply different amounts of pressure at different parts of the thing. But I try to keep the pressure nice and even across the, the whole sanding block here. Or, you know, your leveling beam. Okay. Okay, now we went back and forth a little bit. And now we're just going to kind of take a look at how we're doing here. In fact, we can uh, tighten in a little bit, maybe. And you can kind of see there that... Well, we looks like we're taking some off the top, right across there. There we go. Well, we still got a couple spots right there, and there's still a little bit left right there. But other than that, looks like we've pretty much taken it off all the way across. So there's not a whole lot to do. We got a little bit of work right here in the middle. We'll just keep going. And we want this to feel smooth across here, you know. After you've done a few of these, you'll be able to feel how it's getting smoother. And I'll kind of roll it right over the edge too. I kind of want to sand that edge down too a little bit, you know. And it won't, we don't want to take it down too much. We just want to take it down enough to get the uh, uh, all the marker off of there. Sometimes I'll go back and forth like that. You know, when you're sanding in this direction here, you're putting scratches in it in this direction. So when I go back over this direction, over like this, that's, you know, putting the scratches the opposite way, which helps to, you know, cut just a little bit more flat, a little bit more level. and it makes for a nice smooth surface. Now I'm looking across here and I'm going, I think we've gotten just about everything out of there. There are a few dents in some of these uh, frets here, but I think what I'm gonna try to do is I'm just gonna take it down just a little bit more and see if we can't get a few of these little dents out of the frets. But they are looking good. And we'll go over it on this side too, just sort of rounding over the edge. And you can 
feel how smooth it is once we've gotten them all level. You know, you sand it across here and you feel it's even, it's smooth. All right. Now we're going to go back over this way one more time. And when I'm doing my final ones, you see, I'm going to go over this this way here. Let me widen out a little bit. When I'm going over it this way, I'm applying a little bit less pressure. I'm just sort of letting it ride across there because now I'm almost into the polishing stage where I'm trying to use my my wore out 600 paper here and I'm trying to almost start to polish the frets a little bit. Okay, so now we got that across there and you can see that they look pretty good. There's just a few little dents in there here and there, but they're looking good. They're looking flat and they look real nice. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do to this is we're going to crown these frets. See, now we put, we made this nice and flat. We got the top of these frets so they're all perfectly level to each other, okay? Now what we did is, but we flattened out the top of them a little bit, you know, more than they should be. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over with the marker one more time, and we're going to make these tops of these frets a nice little point. So that when you slide your string across there, it's sliding on a, a point of uh, fret, not a big flat area of fret. So here we go with this. Let's go put some more marker on here. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we'll just put a little bit more marker across here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our fret file and we're going to go ahead and... We're going to file that, file the side of this fret down until there's just a tiny, tiny little bead of this marker left over. And sometimes it's really hard to see. But it, it will be there. Okay, now. Ooh. All right, let's zoom, 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 zoom in there. Okay, you can see it's got some black mark across the top of there. Where are we at? Right here, but ah, all right, we're on this one. Okay, now we're gonna take my fret file and see that these are really tiny little frets. We're gonna go with the, with the smallest fret setting on this file. And we're just basically gonna go across here like this. I like to keep the fret file working the fret in the middle of the fret. I don't try to try to stay away from the, from the ends here and the way back here. I want it to work, I want it to just kinda work right in here. I need to widen out some more, do I? I need to uh, work right in here. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of set that on there like that. And we'll just kind of go back and forth, keeping it flat. And I'm feeling to see how easy my filing gets to be. When the filing gets easy, I know that I've got it good. Now, if you can see that right there, let's zoom in on that one. That one we did. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see. Is that going to get it right there? Which one did we do? We did this one right here. You see how that's just got a little tiny bit of a line across the top. It's really hard to see. But that's kind of what we're looking to do. We pretty much almost removed that whole line right off there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that for all the rest of these frets. And, uh, you know, we'll widen out a little bit. And we'll be right back when we go through all those frets. Go ahead and, and get them all just like this here. You know, we'll do, maybe we'll do one more before we, before we cut loose here. Hey, there we go. You got to find the, hey, there's the small one right there. Okay, we'll do this one here. Yeah, buddy. It's all kind of a feel thing, you know, you just want to kind of feel it. You know? It's definitely a feel thing. You just keep making it so it's smooth. And you don't really want to apply much pressure on it, you know, just... Right there. Take a look at that. Oh, yeah, that's looking real good. Okay, we'll be right back when we get them all done. Alrighty, we are back, 
and we have went over these right here went over all the frets one time and now what we're doing is we're just kind of going back over and getting another feel for it just to make sure we got them where we want them you know there's no because this is an important part of it right here this is one of the most important jobs there is in, the, in making this feel smooth so we want to make sure we get these frets just right on the sides and you know it's going to help take out some of those little dents that we had in the frets going to make sure everything is nice and smooth and, and ready to go. Just making sure that everything feels nice and smooth like it should. You know, a couple little spots that aren't just right, you know. Like that front right there, that one needs a little, just a little bit more. Yeah, buddy. You get into these lower frets and they really do need to be just right. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to flip it over this way. And we're going to go just a little bit off of this side here. So that's just one of those things. One of those little tricks that the Mojo Man knows. Right there, when you, once you get it going that one way, you take it back over the other way. And you can tell, there's a few of them that needed it. There's a few of them that didn't. But we check them out because this is all very, very, very important get that right all right we got them all real good okay let's widen out a little bit okay now that we've got this thing all like that what we want to do is we want to take a take a rag or something we're just going to wipe off some of those some of the metal that we filed off there we get that all nice and wiped off there okay and now that we have that real that nice little edge on there, see now we gotta start polishing these down. So we're gonna make it nice and smooth. Okay. So we're gonna dig into our little box o sand paper here. We got some special pieces. And then we got some ones that we always use, and then a little bit of scotch and bright. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a piece of good old 320. Now this is just an old piece of sandpaper, you know, it doesn't have to be anything special. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of fold it into a little, like that right there, and we're just gonna kind of go over it like this. See, we wanna use a little round piece so that it kind of gets down in there, and you see how it's doing. Just sort of rounding over those cracks a little bit, smoothing things out. All right, now I just did that right there. Now that's what I wanted to do just to get that a little bit smoothed out. But the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do the fret ends. Now if we run our hand across here like that, we run a hand or fingers across that edge. You can feel that there's a few um, things sprouting out and things like that. A few things sprouting out. So we want to make sure we take care of those. So we'll get out our, our trusty little files. So we just went down to Harbor Freight and got ourselves a bunch of little little pack of these pack of these here files right here. Come whole pack. You get a whole bunch of little tiny ones in there. Ball shapes and varieties of sizes. And I picked this one here because this one here has a, right here along this side, there's no filings, so it's just flat along this back side right here. There's only one side that has that has any file part on it, and that's right up here. So when I use it on the fretboard, I'm not going to be filing the edge of the fretboard. I'm just going to be getting the edge of the fret. So let's tighten in a little bit here, and we'll show you exactly what we're talking about here. See, see what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this file here, and we want to just kind of take off 
when I kind of take off this edge right here. We're gonna smooth that right out. Let's see if we can, yeah, we're gonna smooth out that little edge and we're just gonna kind of go over it like this. So we're gonna kind of go over and around and we're just trying to smooth that out just a little bit. You see it's got a little bit of a, and down, and around and down, and around and down, and around and down. And we'll do that on this side here. This, just like that, all the way up and down. And then we'll come back and we'll do the other side and we'll go like this. And we'll just kind of go over from that side. And we'll go up and down the side on that, like that. Okay? And then, when we get done, we're going to flip it back over. We'll get back in the shot here. And we're going to go over it like this. We'll go over it like this here. We'll, we'll, on this side, and kind of go over it like that. That is one of the tricks to getting it just right. If we come at it from multiple angles, see, once we've done it from the top side, like, you know, we did it like this, boom, 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 then we're going to come back and do it like this here, okay? So, I think everybody gets that concept, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that, and when we get all the little fret ends done, I'll show you the difference, and then we'll be on to the next thing. All right, we went ahead and we got all the little fret ends here. We got them all rounded over real nice and smooth. You run your finger across there. You can still feel a little bit of stuff, but it still needs just a little bit of help, doesn't it? So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, get out our little piece of sandpaper right here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to go up and down this edge just a little bit, real lightly, with this piece of 320 right here. we go right over the edge real lightly. Just making sure that that's all feeling real nice and smooth. And we're just sort of easing our way over. I don't want to just, I don't want to hit the top of the frets at all. I just want to get those little, that little stuff off the end there. So that's feeling a little bit more comfortable. All right. Now our next step is we're going to do something that's called rolling the edge of the fretboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this height gauge here because it's got a nice little sharp metal edge on it. It's not real sharp but it's you know square and it's kind of sharp. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, the take this tool right here, take this and we're just going to sort of scrape it back and forth there and we're going to sort of round over the edge of this fretboard right in there. We want to just kind of round that over a little bit so it's not a hard edge anymore. And you don't want to take a whole lot off there, just a little bit and we're going to do this all the way up and down the fretboard. And you know this little height gauge here doesn't really take off anything. It just takes off just a little bit and it's quicker than and better than using a piece of sandpaper or something like that. And it gets right in between there. And another thing that it works nice for is going over the top of the frets like or over the over the fretboard with the flat part too. You can use it in it. We'll go over top of that and then we'll kind of level that out, smooth it. And it really kind of makes the fretboard just that much more flat and level for you and a little bit more slick. So we're going to, I think we left off right here. So we're just going over this and, you know, we're kind of turning it as we go. So we're just sort of rounding that edge over. This is one of the things that really makes the guitar feel just that much more comfortable. It makes it feel broken like it's been played, this has been played for a while, you know? And that's kind of what makes it, uh, you know, it, it gives you that old shoe feel. You know, like you had a pair of shoes that you, you know, you haven't worn in a while. You used to wear them all the time, and you put them on, and they go, oh, dang, man, these ones feel good. They feel like, you know, it fits comfortable. It's nice. It fits your, your, your style and your, 
and your hand just makes playing that much more easy and that's what you want you're not fighting the guitar as you're playing you see I can run that right along there and that's not catching on nothing that's the way it should be now we'll just do this top side the top side is not so much as important as the bottom side so you don't really have to put a whole lot of you have to scrape a whole lot, just a little bit, you know. But it helps too. Get that thumb over the side. You know, scraping down this fretboard, you know, that makes it makes a big difference. Get that right there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then you know something like this takes a few minutes to do and it sure does make a world of difference and it's something that you won't ever have to do again on this guitar it's something that's gonna make it feel and play real nice and easy and you know every guitar needs this it really does if you got a guitar and you haven't had this done to it you need to go get it done because it just makes it that much nicer to play why sit here and play guitar that you're fighting you know that just doesn't feel right now I'm taking the edge of this this corner of this I'm taking the corner of this little gauge here I'm just sort of getting in there and getting behind that fret I like to do that because it helps get that grime and junk out from right there because that's where it will build up right in there so we'll get in there and we'll get that out Not real bad. Okay, we'll flip it over and we'll do it on this side too. Hey. You know, it's just a little attention to detail that make the difference between, you know, just getting it set up. You know, you can go get your guitar set up, okay. And they'll go through the things and they'll get it in the ballpark for you, you know. But they're not going to check a lot of different things. They're not going to make it so it's easy to play. They're just going to make it so that it's set up. That's it. Okay, now that we got that all taken care of, we're going to go ahead and wipe it down a little more time here. Just give it a little bit of love in there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take this thing and we're just going to kind of scrape this down a little bit in between all these. And you'll see that it makes a difference. It makes it a little bit shinier. You know, it makes that wood just, just shine just a little bit more in between there. Because it likes that. We're kind of, you know, planing it. We're scraping it flat. And that's what you want. You want a nice flat fretboard so that when you bend that string, it's going across something smooth. It's not going, you know, you're not pushing against the, the, the grain of the wood and stuff. And like I said, these little, these tiny little stupid things that you do just make the fretboard feel that much more easy and, and you know, like, oh, wow, this is one. And, it, you know, what the, all, all this stuff adds up to is mojo, you know, there's no secret to it. It's just going through it and doing the things that you need to do to this guitar to get it so that it's playing in a sweet spot. So it's doing the things that it's supposed to do, you know, doing things right. It's just taking time. And you know this, what does this take? A little bit of time? A little bit of education? Get yourself all, you know, learned up on this? Okay. Now that I've got this clean, I'm gonna go over this one more time with some rubbing alcohol. Because we've opened up that grain, and you know, we've, we've scraped some stuff up, and now I wanna get, get whatever was left on that fretboard, I wanna get it off, and I wanna get it clean. And the reason we use rubbing alcohol is, and I've said this a million times, Rubbing alcohol gets in there, it cleans all the junk out of there, all the grease and the oil and the, and, the, and the crap in there that you don't want on there. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't sink into the wood. It dries up real quick, so you can see how this is already dry. It's not wet still. It's all nice and dry. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to take, I have a nice little piece of another piece of sandpaper here, but I got a nice little smooth piece right here. This is like a piece of uh, 1,000 and 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll that up just a little bit. And we are just gonna kinda go back over the top of this again, going back and forth, smoothing out this stuff that we've kinda done on the edge here, you know. See, what we're trying to do is trying to get these little tops of these where we, where we were sanding, or where we were filing, and getting that so that it's nice and smooth too, because you know, we don't want to have little filing marks in there and stuff, so we just kind of get the edge real nice. And then we'll move on to the, the fret board here. We'll get the top of the frets. We'll come down here, we'll get this edge here, and you can just, you can feel right, you know, the sandpaper, it's just it's just gliding over there. There's absolutely no no friction, no no nothing, no nothing catching. Okay. And like I said, we're just trying to get this smoothed out across here a little bit. Okay. Now we did it with that piece of thousand. Now I'm gonna move on to a piece of fifteen hundred and we're gonna roll that one up just the same way. Same good old ways like that. Maybe we'll give this a little wipe off here. Okay, we're gonna just go back over that again too. We're just trying to make this as smooth as we can possibly get it. This is a little bit different part of our sandpaper there. Go back and forth, back and forth. All right, now we went back and forth. Now we're just going to go this way a little tiny bit. And I'm not putting any pressure on it whatsoever. I am merely just trying to get a little bit of a polish on it with this piece right here, just as little as I can. Okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over it with this Scotch Brite pad here. And we're going to fold it in half and we're just going to kind of go over here. And we're going to try to try to pay attention to the wood. We're going to try to give the wood some love in here. We're going to go over this way. And we're going over the edges. And the, the Scotch Brite pad is a good, um, it's like using the nylon almost, you know, when you go across this edge, if it catches anything, you'll be able to feel it catch. Okay, now we're going over this fretboard this way, but we also want to go over it this way. Because that's the way we're going to be bending, and that's what we want it to be smooth. So we're going to go over it this way. And the more work we put into this fretboard, the more smoother it's going to be, the more easy it's going to be to play, the more it's going to feel comfortable and just just right. It's going to be right. It's going to be, you know, you're going to, you're not going to care what the name says up here. You know, you're not going to care that it says PV. As far as you're concerned, it might as well say you know, guitar sent from the gods. You know, it's gonna play perfect. It's gonna play the way you want it to play. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna do all those things and it's gonna make you a better player and, and inspire you, you know? Might sound like a lot for a guitar to do, but hey, you know, if it's doing, it's, it's gonna be doing its job. It's gonna be, you know, it's, it's you know, it's here and doing what it's supposed to be. Okay, we went over that with a piece of scotch bright pad and you can kind of see it's starting to look like down there. See, see how nice this, this, you know, we run our finger across there. That's kind of getting smooth. There's a little bit of stuff right there, you know, right there where the pour is. But that's not nothing serious. That's just, you know, it's pretty smooth across there. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this here piece of scotch, or I mean, a piece of steel wool. And we're going to shine these, these uh, frets right up real nice and shiny like. And we're also going to be hitting the wood too. So we're just going to kind of go up and down and up and down. Now the first pass, we're going to make two passes across this thing. The first pass is I'm just trying to get the, you know, the, uh, the, the major part of it. I'm just trying to get the wood. I'm trying to get a little bit of polish on the frets, which we are. 
We're doing a good job of that. Now when you're using steel wool, you got to be careful because the steel will, the, the pieces of metal will come off of this. And if you're, you know, if you're using it on a neck that's not on the, on the guitar, you're probably going to be all right. But if you're using one on a guitar, you want to watch out. You want to cover up your pickups and stuff so that you don't. Because, you know, it will pull out, the magnets from the pickups will pull the steel wool fibers right into the, you know, right up to the magnets. You'll be in there picking all that stuff off. And we're just kind of giving her a good rubby dubby dubby. Okay. And I can see that's actually doing a little bit more than. Yeah, that's getting down there real good. So you get all that good junk out of there. Okay. Now that I went over it like that, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my finger and put it right on top of that fret. In fact, I think what I'm going to do. tear off a piece of that steel wool, we're going to bind it right up into a little tiny ball, okay? And then with that little tiny ball, I'm going to take them just some polish these frets real good. So they're nice and shiny, each one of them. Oh yeah! They're already getting pretty shiny. Put my pressure right on the top of that fret with my finger so we're getting some real good polishing action there. And the steel wool, you know, polishes things up real nice. And you know, sometimes I do things a little bit different than I have in the past, you know. I've used chrome polish on these and stuff like that, and that all works well and good. You know, I think the, the steel wool works pretty nice too. I like that. You know, I do still go over back over it and polish it up a little bit with the with the sander. I'm going to show you that. We'll get all these nice and nice and shined up. Oh yeah, she's looking goo goo good. All right. Real nice and shiny. And it takes a little time, it's a process, but it's definitely well worth it. Okay, now we got that all wet. Get like that. Okay. Ooh, that is smooth. Okay, it should be smooth. We put enough work into it, huh? Okay, let's widen out just a little bit here. Okay. Now what next step we're gonna do is we have went ahead and we've, you know, we've done pretty much everything to it. We've got a night we we leveled the fretboard so that was nice and so the frets were nice and level, and then we went ahead and we we run the, the the sanding beam across the top of them so that they were perfectly level, you know, we got all, the, all right, and then we crowned the fret so that we had a nice little point on top of them, and then we we rolled the fret edge, or the edge of the fretboard right here, we rolled that so it's nice and smooth. We did the ends of the frets. So that they're nice and smooth and they're not going to catch anybody's fingers or anything like that. So when you run your hand up and down the neck, it feels nice and smooth. We went ahead and we polished the frets. And we got the, the fretboard nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. You know, it's just important to have the, the fretboard smooth as it is to have the fret smooth. So, we got all that stuff taken care of. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to put a little bit of hydration on that fretboard. So what we're going to do is we're going to use what I've always used on, on fretboards and it's good old coconut oil. And we're just going to spread a little bit of this coconut oil on the fretboard here. And the reason I like fret coconut oil is because, well, at room temperature it's a solid, okay? But when you put your hands on it and stuff like that, it starts. the first thing it starts to do is melt. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get some hydration in this wood but I don't want to use an oil that's going to soak in. I don't want to use lemon oil or something like that that's going to soak in too far. It's going to loosen up the frets. It's going to get down in the way down in the wood and make it soft. I don't want soft wood. I just want it to be hydrated a little bit so that it's not, you know, dry and, and, and you know, wore out. This stuff just works perfect because it gets right in there just enough 
to get things moisturized a little bit. It's just moisturizing the top of the wood. It's not soaking in all over the place and chunk, you know? We don't want that. We don't want soaked up oil wood. Okay, now that I've taken that off right there, I got that. We're just gonna let it maybe sit for half a second. And then we're gonna take some good old tissue and we're gonna go ahead and wipe this sucker off. See, you know, there's a few spots right there. And if you see something, you know, that's still looking a little, uh-huh, rub it a couple times. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and just give this a nice little wipe down. And ooh, look how nicey nice it looks. It needed some hydration, didn't it? It sure did. See, we got a little bit of stuff off there, you know? We're gonna go back over that. We're gonna make sure it looks real nice and clean. Okay. Work down the side a little bit. Get the back here. Oh yeah, she's looking good. Okay, now that I got that right there with the with the toilet paper, I'm just gonna hit it with a rag one time here. There. Oh, she's feeling good. She's feeling real good. Now, there's one last thing that we gotta do to this thing to do with the the, uh, the final touch. This is what we always do. Here we go. Got our little buffing wheel here. We're gonna take this buffing wheel and we're gonna polish out this fretboard just a little bit. That plugs right in there, real nice and easy peasy. Yep. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, see, now we're gonna make sure we know which way the thing is spinning. Because I don't wanna I don't wanna spin into the what I want to spin away from the wood. So we'll make sure we know which way this thing is spinning before we go hit it on it. Hey. Get this rag out of the way. Here we go. There you have it, folks. Man, look at that. Look how nice and shiny and flat and smooth that is across there. I mean, it's real nice. Across the edge here is nice. We've done it all. That fretboard is going to play nice and smooth and easy. It sure is. It's 30, 30 And we're gonna give one more little wipe down right here. Just to kinda smooth things out just a little bit. And you know, at this point, if you wanted to, if you wanted to, give it another shot of some oil. You know, we polished a lot of stuff. We got a little bit in there and you could give it just another little light coating it ain't gonna hurt nothing. Sometimes a couple of coatings, you know, you give it a couple of ones and it'll last a little, basically last a little bit longer, you know. Especially for a guitar that hasn't had the fretboard conditioned in a while. You know, if it hasn't been, if it's been a while or never, in some cases, then, you know, uh, look at that. Oh yeah, nice shiny frets, nice shiny fretboard, it's looking good. Well, that's going to do it for this video, we've taken the fear out of making your fretboard nice, now all you got to do is just, you know, we're, we're, we'll go over, the, we'll go over the, the tuners next time, next time we'll do the tuners, we'll go over here and we'll get these all straight and the headstock back all together, everything straight, and then we'll go ahead and do the body. 
And man, we'll have to put this sucker back together. But man, look at that fretboard. That was really looking nice. So now that you know how to do that, there's no excuses. You can go ahead and do your own. You go out to Harbor Freight, go over to your local hardware store. Get you know, get a few tool tools, the the files. You know, it didn't really take much. A couple of some feeler gauges. You know, eh, it don't take hardly really nothing. So we're gonna say adios for now from Mojo Shop Guitar, baby. <laughs> Mojo Shop Guitar Please like and subscribe